Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Hunter Doniger and I'm here to talk to you from Project Inspire at the College of Charleston Stono River Preserve. Today we're going to be talking about birds and Mark Catesby and bird adaption. So this is really fun and it's all about drawing birds. You can learn a lot of different things in here. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about Mark Catesby. He was a naturalist and this was a long time ago. He was a scientist and back then scientists, in order for them to tell other people about what they saw, they act actually also had to be artists. And so in like 1600 to 1700, he came from Europe, came to South Carolina, found amazing things and he couldn't just load up his boat or take pictures because that wasn't invented yet. So he actually had to sketch and draw and paint images of things that he saw. And so this is a woodpecker, one of the things that he saw. And you can see right here, it says painted flora and fauna. Basically that's a nice fancy way of saying plants and animals and birds and things that he found. He was amazing. So let's draw a bird. So if you have a pencil and a piece of paper, that's all you need for this. We're gonna start thinking about the type of bird you might wanna draw. Maybe you have a particular bird. Maybe you wanna make up your own bird and have combinations of all kinds of things. So let's see what we have here. Let's start with simple shapes because you know the head of a bird is kind of like a circle and the body of a bird is kind of like an oval or an ellipse shape and like the table is a triangle. So everybody can draw a circle, an oval and a triangle. So go ahead and try that. After you do that, just kind of like blend it in, put like the skin over the top of the bird so you can see like the, the fluffiness of what the bird would be. So it's starting to look a little bit more like a bird. Once you're done, erase those original lines and you can start sketching in the different parts of the bird, like the beak, where the wing is going to go, and then start putting in the legs. If you notice, the top part of the legs is a little bit of a triangle with some rectangles going down. That's really all it is. Go ahead and then add the beak and the eyes and a few other details and it's really starting to look like a bird. Now, a lot of people like to stop right here, but not you. You're gonna add some extra things like the feathers. Add the feathers and the talons that would go in there and think about all the other details. And really to do that, all you need to do is just draw some long, not completed ovals and just overlap them as they go down and it makes it look realistic. The last thing you need to do is have a dark, medium, and light area. By that, I mean some areas are a little bit shinier and light. Some areas are darker. So if you squint your eyes and you look and you can see a dark, medium, and light, beautiful. That's exactly what you're looking for. Now, just so you know, there's different types of beaks. If you want to draw another bird, you can draw a meat eater. You can see how that beak is kind of curved and it's made for meat eating. And then there's a seed eater. They're really good at breaking apart things and making and eating the seeds. There's fruits and nuts eaters like parrots. And there's nectar feeders. You can see that they have that long beak that goes into the flowers. And then there's fish eaters, you know, like penguins and things like that. So there's all these different birds and their beaks really determine the different things that they eat. The feet are another thing that's really cool about birds. Birds that are used to climbing or swimming or running or grasping, all of them have different kinds of feet and you can see how that they would really work. If you're grasping at things like an eagle and they need to grasp their prey, they would need some really long talons. If you're a duck and you need to swim in the water, you need those webbings in between so you can push that water along. It's amazing, right? So different adaptations of birds and species and things like that. That's another thing to think about. So let's think, what if the canary or the birds that you might see outside your, your, your building and your window, and you might see a cardinal. And what would happen if it got really cold here? Would they change? What if um, the food source that they like to eat wasn't there? How would they change? Would their beak change? Would they need to become um, swimming birds? What kind of things do you think would change? Some things happen over the years. Um, Think about the habitat that they live in. Some birds live up in trees. Some birds live um, on land. There's all different kinds of places and there's different reasons why they live in these different areas. Okay, so use your higher level, th level thinking and imagine there's a, wor a world that your bird needs to adapt. Okay, think really hard, like use your imagination. What happened to the environment? How could your bird adapt? Draw the bird. So the bird that you drew, now draw with new adaptations. So you drew whatever bird that you drew, now make adaptations to it. 
make a different beak, make different feet. Maybe they need longer feathers or no feathers at all. It could be anything that you want. Be as creative as you possibly can be. And that's it. So you can rewatch this video. You can play it again. You can stop it at any time that you want. And that will be just absolutely perfect. So fantastic. It's been wonderful seeing you. And we're going to move on to maybe another thing. And that will be great. Fantastic. And I will see you around. Bye.